Hello! In this video, we wanted to show you some basics about how to use equalization when mixing audio to remove unwanted or nasty frequencies. These are some basic equalization skills, but they'll go a long way toward understanding what the point of equalization is, and it should make a big difference in the tracks that you're creating. First, let's talk about what an equalizer does. An equalizer lets you manipulate the frequency response of a sound. And to put this in an everyday context, you've used these before when you turn the bass or treble knob on a Bluetooth speaker. And the equalizers we're going to be using are a little bit more advanced, but they use the same concept. If we think about the bass or treble knobs on a Bluetooth speaker, each knob is really controlling three things. First, the starting frequency that the knob manipulates, so the bass knob starts at a low frequency the range of frequencies that the knob manipulates. So the bass knob has a range that is all the frequencies lower than the starting frequency. And three, the level that it manipulates the frequencies. So how much more or less of the bass you will get by turning the knob higher or lower. The EQ we'll be using for demonstration today is similar to this concept, but it has a lot more knobs, essentially. We would call each individual knob a band in this case. And lastly, we typically use the knobs on our Bluetooth speakers to boost the frequencies we want to hear. But today we'll be talking about removing the frequencies we don't want to hear. The first step is to put an EQ plugin on the track that needs some EQ help. So let's do that. First, you're gonna find your effects or plugins, and every DAW has a different place for these, but in Reaper, if you're looking at the mixer area, it'll be in this little empty spot right here. You can click, and then you can find the effect you need. Uh, we're gonna be using a graphic equalizer. This is something that lets you see the changes that you make to a track in real time. And it, the graphic equalizer for Reaper is called ReEQ. So let's add that, it pops right open. And once you're in there, you can hit play on the track to see what the frequency response looks like. Now simply seeing what's going on might not be super helpful right now. So let's talk about what's going on inside this equalizer. Most equalizers have somewhere between three to 10 bands or knobs, if we want to go back to the Bluetooth speaker analogy. And each band is a point along the graph that you can move. There are a lot of different things you can control with this, but we're going to focus on the frequency, the gain, and the bandwidth. And to equate this back to the Bluetooth knobs, the frequency uh, was something you couldn't control in the Bluetooth knobs. The gain was how high or low the knob was. And the bandwidth essentially is the range of frequencies that that knob controls. So the first thing we're gonna do is click on a band somewhere in the middle. So I'm gonna use band three and drag it straight up. And you should see something that looks like this. Uh, it may look like a spike, if, depending on which EQ you're using. And what we want is for it to look more like a spike rather than a hill. Uh, we can achieve that by lowering the bandwidth a little bit. In Reaper, there's a nice shortcut where you can left click on the uh, band and then use your mouse wheel to change the bandwidth. So we want it to look like a little spike. Not too thin, not like this. A fat spike is good. Now we can get to the point of this video, how to remove unwanted frequencies. I recommend putting an EQ on every individual track since they'll all be a little bit different likely. It's best to click solo on the track that you're applying EQ to, which will mute all the other tracks except for this one so you can listen in. So you're gonna hit play on your music and you're gonna drag this spike from left to right across the frequency range and you are searching for parts of the sound that you don't like. Typically, I'm looking for things like boomy tones, hanging frequencies or buzzes in the room, and then mouth noise or key noise. So let's find some of those areas. So there's one there, like sizzle, I don't like that. Ooh, that is usually the worst part. So right in this 500 range is usually a very bad spot for my room. And I usually have to do a little bit of uh, 
EQing there, and then I have some uh, bassoon sizzle over here in this range. So once you find a specific area that has some sound you don't want, you can drag this spike straight down. So it's like a pit now. And if the sound covers a wider frequency range than your pit seems to be, you can increase the bandwidth a, uh, a little bit to make it rounder instead of spikier. So let's listen to what that does to the sound. I'm going to toggle this on and off as I play. So to me, that area is what we call the muddy range of the instrument. And if you cut out this area around 500, it'll make things a little bit less muddy, a little more clear. And typically unwanted sounds in the lower areas of the frequency spectrum, so like 500 down, require slightly larger bandwidth. So a bigger, a bigger scoop rather than a little spike. And things up in the higher range tend to require smaller bandwidth to cover a larger area. So that's the basic premise on how to use an equalizer and remove unwanted frequencies from your tracks. Uh, here's the kind of EQ I apply to almost every bassoon take I record to get rid of the nasty sounds in my room and the ones that my bassoon produces. So this band over here is called a low shelf in Reaper. If you just drag that all the way down, that's usually a good first thing to do because I this is like all of the sounds that you don't, like low rumblings that just happen in your room. So I usually take those out. And then there was one more over here, yeah, around 10,000 is where my bassoon's like sizzle and finger noise lives. So I take that out and that's usually about it. Um, my room's been uh, working pretty well for me lately, but that's kind of what I do. And I'm, I'm being a little aggressive with this. I usually pull these down to around negative six dB and that tends to, to work out pretty well. And what's great about this is once you know what you normally do, you can save it as a preset so you never have to go back in and do this like search and destroy type process again. You can just add the EQ, go to your preset, select it, and move on. So I hope that's helpful, and I hope that we're teaching a little bit about how to use an equalizer to improve the sound quality of the tracks you're producing.